Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. I am so happy to be here once again. It is August 23rd, and I am your host, Lady Lisa Flanagan with Bigger Facts. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, I want to um, start off by saying that we're sponsored by... I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can they hear me? I couldn't hear nothing. That's why I thought something was wrong. Sorry, everyone. I am your host, Lady Lisa Flanagan, with Bigger Facts, sponsored by Futures World, residential commercial cleaning. If you need any housework, cleanouts, foreclosed cleanouts, apartments before you move in, we are here to help you. One second, I am I am having an issue for a second, a technical difficulty for a second. Just bear with me if you can hear me. Give me one second. And I'll be right with you if you can hear me. Am I clear? Can someone let me know if I'm clear? Okay, still no sound. I still have no sound. Am I clear? Can you hear me? Please let me know if I, okay, I think we have it fixed now. I think we're good. I think we're good. Thank you, Marcus, my man from Mixed Station Radio. Thank you. Appreciate your help. <laughs> so again, if you need any cleaning, clean outs, ready to move into your new apartment, anyone who needs you know, foreclosed clean out before you move and move out, we are here, Futures World ready to come to you let us know if you want free estimates you can hit us up on the number on the card or email us at futuresworld at um, 9520 at gmail.com thank you and i also want to thank my handsome husband who i love so much for supporting me in this i thank him every day because he is truly a gift from god to me i love my husband so much and there is nothing that he will not help me with he is like my number one my number one fan and i am very grateful to have him on watching me helping me seeing me through all of these things so i'm excited also if you all haven't seen the video about um my eob our eob each one bless where we had a short video speaking on you know the people in west africa india how we want to help start supporting them um if you haven't had a chance to look at that video please look at the video so going forward i just want to give a few shout outs hey sheila Alexis. Hey, Clinton. Glad to see all of you. Angelia, my sister. 
my cousin Angie. I'm glad to see each and every one of you. Jojo Wilder, my friend, how are you? Everyone can hear me. I can see my, hear my sister. Can you hear me now, sister? <laughs> my sister Tanya is on. <laughs> So I am so glad. I'm going to give everyone a few more minutes. Erlene, good to see you. I'm going to continue to give everyone a few minutes to get on because we have a very, very wonderful show tonight. Hello, Debbie Jones. Nice to see you. Welcome. Welcome. Yes, I am so excited tonight. My topic is going to be amazing. It's going to be dating while separated. Hmm, I would really love to know what you all think about that topic. So I'm going to give you a second to digest while I'm letting everyone else come on in. Come on. Hey, Mac, my big sister, Mac. Hello, hello, hello. I'm so excited. You have to bear with me. <sighs> I've been doing so much, so much today, ripping and running all day. So I am trying to calm my nerves down so I can, um, you know, take it down a bit. Okay. My friend, Alexis, good to see you. Can't wait to see you again. Um, hopefully we can get into get to go out one day while we're still in this pandemic hope we can just meet up and have a brunch or something i would love to do that because i miss you um so with that being said i do want to start speaking i want to speak on a few things about dating while separated would you should you could you what do you think i really want to know your inputs on that meaning merrick do you believe that it's okay for married people to still go out on dates although they're separated i have my own opinion about it but i need to hear your opinion about it i'm not always correct like i said this is just a show for real talk real talks all day i'm not saying that i'm 100 right with anything because that's not the case it's just a great dialogue to help someone who may be going at you and said I really want to know what you think about dating someone that's married, but they're separated. Hello, Erlene. How are you? <laughs> so with that being said, wait, okay, one second. <laughs> oh, thank you. I needed that. Hold on, Sorry. <laughs> hold just one minute. <laughs> it's been amazing. Watermelon. Don't do <laughs> This is Minnie Bay Watermelon. Don't, <laughs> I know the glass. Don't ask me why my husband put it in this glass, but it's water. I am delivered. <laughs> Don't do that. I promise you guys, it's watermelon. Minnie Bay Watermelon, trust me. <laughs> my you can't handle the truth. <laughs> I can tell y'all better know it's the truth. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. You guys better know that it's the truth. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Marcus. <laughs> See, he's starting already, but. <laughs> sorry. But anyway, back to the topic at hand, Marcus. <laughs> so what I would like to talk about is married people who are separated, but still choose to date. My opinion, I don't think it's fair because what happens if that married person decides to go back home? He didn't start a whole relationship on the other side, but still decide to go back home. And it happens with females too. I'm not just speaking only on the men, but women too have a whole relationship on the other side. But then later on down the line, you decide to go back home. Sometimes people go out because they think the grass is greener and it's not. Sometimes people just get fed up and want to end the relationship, but don't know how to cut it off. So what do a lot of us do? Start arguments, become very petty and want to just because you want to go hang out. And a lot of men, y'all used to be known for that, but now women doing it too now. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're doing it too. But I really think it's a bad idea to start a relationship on the other side where people will catch feelings. Hi, baby. That's my hubby on the line. I love you too, baby. Thank you. <laughs> but I also want, I really would like to know what you think about dating someone that's still married. Just because they say they're separated doesn't mean in my eyes, they're not available. If you want to be available to someone, then you need to go get a divorce. I don't think it's fair if you put a person in that situation 
to start catching feelings, dating you and thinking something's going to happen between you and them and nothing happens. I think that's the worst thing. So before you keep jumping out, I'm single. We've been separated. I live upstairs. She lives downstairs or he lives downstairs and she's upstairs. Come on, stop. There are still relations that's going on. I'm sure. Maybe not with everyone, but I know that there are a few people with relationships still going on. So with that being said, I really want to take the time out and basically give you a little dialogue on some people that I've been counseling who are who who's going through this right now because they assume something's going to come out of this. And guess what? It's not. You've been holding on to this person for two years, two years. And now guess what? He's going back home. He's going back home. So now what do you do? What do you do? You're hurt. You're broken. And this is how a lot of people end up in jail. And I hate to say it. You have people who will sit up here and kill people. And if I can't have you, he can't have you. If she can't, no one can have you but me. There's a lot of people out here who are dealing with that right now. And it's sad and it's unfortunate, but it's happening. You even with the younger generation, you see them too. Young girls getting shot by young guys because they don't want anyone else to have that person either. Why must we go through that? If a person does not want to be bothered, let them go. Let them go. If you want to go out here and date, guess what? Get a divorce. It's a lot of mental people out here that goes through these that go through these things. And guess what? They will come knocking on your door, going after people that you know just because you left them. It's your responsibility to end a relationship. If you're already in a relationship, end one. End it. Uh, My friend Marion, she says, uh, Marion Crocker, she says, I have gone out with men that were separated but didn't want to date them. you, You see, be true, be real. Let's really jump out here and let's let's make it plain. If you want a divorce, get a divorce. Don't leave her hanging on and women don't leave him hanging on. Don't go out here getting side pieces, side chicks and things of that. Come on. We're too old for that. We're too grown for that. Let's stop. It's too many heartbroken people out here who are not healed because of this. They are not healed because they are assuming, okay, it's just a break. It's just a pass for a second. But guess what? It's not. You're hurting people and they're damaged. And some people haven't even, they haven't even come back off of that yet. Speaking to men and women that I consult, I do a small consultation with certain men and women and listening to them, they are really heartbroken. They are devastated because they assumed they had something that they really didn't have. Exactly, Erlene. Erlene, stop leading others on. And you should. You're too old. You're too grown. You need to stop. I don't like to hear the hurt and the pain in people's voices. It bothers me. But to a certain degree, should we hold them responsible a little bit for allowing it to keep happening, to allow it to happen for so long? Are you really going to sit around and wait till your husband come back two years later when he's finished doing whatever he wants to do out in the street and find out the grass isn't greener? Should we wait for that? I want to know. Same thing with men. Are you going to continue to wait for her until she finished clubbing and playing with her girlfriends, hanging out in the streets all hours of the night? Are you going to continue to wait for that? So, yes, they're wrong for continuing to lead you on. But at the end of the day, uh, should you hold some responsibility to that to that for allowing it to take place for so long? Uh, my husband says, what if the person is separated and they know the marriage is over? There is no reconciliation. Some people avoid signing those papers to keep the other party from moving forward. Okay, I've seen that happen and I've heard that has happened. But at, guess what? You can still push certain papers through the courts to get that divorce granted. If you know there's no reconciliation, the judge will still grant that divorce. If the other people don't want to show up, guess what? They don't have to because guess what? I did that. I had the same thing happen to me, whereas though my ex-husband did not want to sign the papers. But guess what? When court date, when the court date came, guess what? The judge granted me my divorce because one, he did not show up. And we already rescheduled it twice. So it can be done. You don't have to sit around and say, well, 
he hasn't filed or she hasn't filed. I think, you know, I'm just waiting for her to file. No, if you want a divorce, you file. You don't have to wait to see who's going to file first. This is why you should not date anyone else until you are divorced. Because anything can happen whereas though you guys may reconcile and the other person left on the side hurt. So that's just my personal opinion. I'm not saying that I'm right, but that's just the way I see it. I'm not saying that I'm always correct. Um, these are just my thoughts. But your thoughts could be different. You may be okay with the fact of going out with somebody else's husband. Because guess what? He's still somebody else's property, whether you want to believe it or not. You could turn a blind eye. You could think that it's all about you, but technically it's not. He still belongs to her and she still belongs to him. Come on, let's wake up on that part. Shake that off. Because my problem, the issue that I have is that women, we have to start respecting each other's relationships. If a married man is coming to you and you know he's married, send him on his merry way. It's up to you to keep these brothers and these brothers and many sisters in line. It's not, don't, you don't want it to happen to you. So guess what? Don't do it to another sister or a brother. Don't do it because that pain is very, it's damaging. It's very damaging. So wake up. Let's come on. Let's get on one accord and start respecting one another. All of that. If you know he's smart, stop entertaining him. I know everyone says we flirt. Flirting is harmless. That's not always true. Flirting is, it can be harmless. You may think it may be in your case it's not, but guess what? Guess what? It's harmless. It's not harmless. It hurts. Because if you go out here and find out that your man is out here flirting with another woman because you're out here flirting, you're going to be, you're going to feel some kind of way. Women, you know, we're going to feel some kind of way because we don't play that game. And men, you don't play that game either because guess what? You guys are too visual. You will start visualizing all types of things. All these things. Yes, sisters play games too. I'm not just saying men. <laughs> we, some, some sisters play it better than the brothers. And that's the truth. They know how to play the game better than the brothers. And that's the sad part. When men, you think you're doing something, trust and believe. That sister's already ahead of you. Um, my uh, mom, my mom says, that is the problem. We don't respect the relationships of others. And that's so true. They don't. I hear some women in hair salon stating oh i don't care that he's married <laughs> i can always kick him back to his wife when i'm done with and that's not cute if you think that is cute you have a major problem because guess what one day you're going to get married too and what comes around goes around and i'm a firm believer in that so keep your hands and your business out of other people's relationships stay in your own it's sad that we have to say things like that but it's a real thing that needs to be said because i'm telling for me I don't have time to be nobody else's for me. I don't have time to be somebody else. Anyone's half time, downtime, spare time, wait, and wasting my time. I'm not going to be that. But if that works for you, then great. I can't tell you what to do with your life. But I'm going to say, stay in your marriage. If you, fi if you find that it's not doable for you and you have to let it go, then guess what? Release her. Or females, release him. You have to show respect. Exactly. Debbie Jones. Exactly. Respect each other goes a long way. Respect. And I agree with that 100%. So I want to know, these are my thoughts. What do you think? Do you think it's okay to date someone that's separated? Because some of you may disagree with me and that's okay. This is just a dialogue that we all come on one accord. We're just having a good time with dialogue and having real conversations with real people. Like I said, I'm not the one to judge anyone and I'm not here to judge. We're not here to judge. We're just here to just shake some things up. Shake some things up and get your mind right. Respect yourself and love yourself. That's all I want you to do. Ladies, we know I, some of us have these bodies and we forever showing every bit and pieces of what, no matter what we wear, we're showing it all. But sometimes, come on, tone it down just a tad bit. It's okay to be sexy. But be grown and sexy. Don't be trashy and sexy. Don't be raunchy and sexy. It's not cute. Trust me, it's not. Guys will look at you for a moment, but guess what? Once they do what they want to do, mm, it's another piece that they already had. It's the same thing, just a different shape. So women, respect yourselves. Love yourself more. You don't always have to jump out here and show everything that God has given you. 
You don't always have to do that. Exactly. Elder Jackson, thank you. Respect yourself and love yourself. Always. We have to start doing that as women because a lot of us just don't care and have that I don't care attitude about the next woman. And it hurts my heart that women are out here like that. And we're supposed to be together and we're supposed to stick together. You want us to do all these other things together, but we can't respect each other's relationships. Come on, stop it. And men the same way. I hear guys say, hey, he broke the bro code, whatever the bro code is. But I hear that a lot from guys. Oh, that's messed up. He broke the, the bro code. He knows you I used to mess with her. <laughs> and that's what they say. You can't exactly. handle the truth. Exactly. And some people can't. Right, Joe? I agree. People, um, but some people can't respect that person and others can't respect back. But you know what? And at the same time, think about it. If a female is coming on to you as a married man, you have a responsibility to turn away from that and respect your own wife. If you're not going to respect your own wife, then you have the problem. And women, stop fighting over these men who are allowing these things to take place. And same thing, women, stop fighting women over a man that you think is yours. If he's showing you all the signs that he's not yours, guess what? He's not yours. Back up. If he want to run free, let him run free. If he wants to be wild, then be wild. Be wild. Exactly, mom. Reciprocate is real. Exactly. It is. It's real. You have to. But I am so tired of seeing our people out here fighting over each other. Women fighting each other, stabbing each other over something that's not even yours. The girlfriend's mad at the wife. Why? <laughs> you mad at the wife. I had a girlfriend who went through a situation that she's married, but the girlfriend knocked on her door and said, hey, your husband and my boyfriend are cheating with the girl up the street. But guess what? The husband is her boyfriend. Isn't that? I mean, she was really bold to even knock on her door and say, your husband and my boyfriend is cheating with the girl up the street. And Hold I just came to let minute. you know. Hold just one minute. <laughs> but it's real. I'm so serious. Stop, ladies, men, please stop. Debbie Jones, she said, this is good information. Keep a good line of communication. What's a relationship? What's a relationship without communication? And that's true. And the sad part I can say about that, um, Ms. Jones, people say they want communication, but everyone doesn't want communication. They really don't. They say it, but they're not really communicating. Some people are like, yeah, hey, hey, I want this. I want, but when it's time to communicate, you're nagging. This is crazy. You're saying things, blah, blah, blah. This is what you get. And it's sad because I love the fact of a great communicator. I do. We have someone on the lines. Hey, who do I have with me? This is your handsome husband, Dr. Danny Flanagan. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm only agreeing with what you said about me being handsome. Uh, Marcus, stop the, stop the sound effects, please. Stop the sound effects. Um, first of all, I want to say this is an amazing topic. I don't know why I always have to break the ice because nobody wants to call and keep it real. But, you know, mm -hmm. honey, I'm always going to push the envelope. Now, I'm speaking from a perspective of when I did not know better. So let me, mm -hmm. let me just preface what I'm getting ready to say by saying that first. Before okay. I knew better, okay? Mm -hmm, a lot mm -hmm. of people, oh, the apostle, the man of God, before I knew better. And we all know that when you know better, you do better. You do better. But what Absolutely. I found, Absolutely. You, know, you know, but what I found when I was uh, going through divorce and I was mm -hmm. separated and I was trying to date, of course, prior to you, my awesome and amazing wife, <laughs> um, <laughs> women were infatuated, <laughs> women were infatuated and excited about the idea of a tailor-made man who was made already into a husband mm -hmm. in other words we've been a husband so we know the role of a husband so mm -hmm. there was not a whole lot of training that the woman had to do because we came already knowing you know our role whether good or bad they just love the idea that we were husbands and they they liked the idea that or oh, he must know how to be one mm -hmm. um but the problem is Men can be so convincing in allowing the woman to know that, hey, we're going to leave the spot, you know, we're separating, we're going to leave the home and all of these other things. 
that they are so excited about the fact that there's this ready-made husband about to come into their lives Mm -hmm. that they don't take the time to process and allow the man to go through the separation process, go through the divorce, and also be healed. Mm-hmm. You know, and I found that there were a lot of women when I was going through divorce and dating while separated where they did not give time for the man to heal. Mm-hmm. Because as men, I might lose my man card for this, but as men, we have to heal as well. You know, mm-hmm. and I, I'm, sure. listen, I'm solidified in my masculinity where I can <laughs> say that we do need to be healed, you know, and, 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 and as a man. But the women... But the women were so excited about, here comes a man who was a husband. He's broken in. He knows what to do. He knows how to pay the bills. They connected to us, and we were still broken and not healed. And I think that this is a great subject, not just because, quote, unquote, it's wrong in God's Mm -hmm. eyes because you're still married, but from the standpoint of you're still bruised. And so Mm -hmm. you're bringing a bruised man into your world. And I think that we have to be careful of that. That's my statement. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I will say to that, yes, there are hungry women. There are some thirsty women, very thirsty. And I don't, I'm not calling all, I just said some, and they know who they are. I don't know who you are, but I have met a few, but sometimes, yes, men, I hate to say this, man, but you do tend to be a tad bit weak when it comes to women. You do, because guess what? You don't know the games that women play. We know, women know women. We know when someone else is checking out our husband. Someone could be sitting right next to you, checking out your husband, and you, and you know them. It could be his so-called fake play sister. I don't play the play sister thing. I don't, I don't do that. I'm sorry. But my thing is that sometimes men, they turn a blind eye to some things, knowing that someone likes them, but they be like, huh, what? What do you mean? I didn't know she liked me. What? Huh? And women too. Well, I didn't pay him no attention. I wasn't even looking at him. But you know, but you turn a mm-hmm. blind eye to it and then turn around days later, she may be hitting, hitting you up or you may be hitting her up because you know. And the conversation started off so fake. I'm just not happy at home. I just wish things was different. And you know what she said? Oh, my goodness. If that was me, you wouldn't have to worry about nothing. I will cook for you, wash your clothes. You would never have to worry about anything. That's how it starts. Right. Because you go that's and not complain what I'm, to that's the not... wrong people. Right, but that's not what that's not the point I'm making. I'm point the point that I'm, I'm making is you guys are weak. I'm no, wait a minute. Sometimes I'm, no, y'all wait, wait a minute. I'm, that's, that's not that's not the point that I'm making. I'm, <laughs> the point that I'm making is <laughs> people are connecting, dating, and connecting while separated, and they're not giving space to heal. I'm not talking about being weak or playing games. Well, how I'm come the man can't give himself you know? time to heal? Why does he? He don't have to jump into anything. Men or women, they can jump themselves in and heal themselves without going into anything correct yeah that's correct but some people are emotionally they have that. emotional <laughs> crutches so, I if, you, it. I so it, if you so if you've been like, so if you've been are. with if you've been with but somebody for 20 years I'm sorry, baby. and then now I you're have single, another call too. you know i'm sorry I'm okay not trying to cut you off but <laughs> you're right call, you're baby. right baby I had to okay. start it off. You know me. I got to start. Okay, I know. You open the windows for everybody else to start pouring in, but I got to let you go. Love you. Mwah. All right, Thanks, baby. Love daughter. you. Who do I have on the line? Good evening, Lady Lisa. This is Elder White. Ah, hello, Elder White. How are you? Pretty good. How is everything? I don't mean to... <laughs> My God, this is a great topic. <laughs> you see you Such a great us, topic. Elder. I Real quick, I'm experiencing ex- that right now where there is a particular young lady who is in ministry, an elder, and the way she calls my name, hey, Pastor White. Oh, mm. my God. It takes, it takes, it takes my, my wife to a whole other place. And you know who my wife is. It takes Absolutely. her to a whole other place. And, and it's not so much that she calls my name is how she says it. Absolutely. And my wife tells me that there is a motive behind it. And I'm just, and we as men, we're like, man, listen, we're not even operating from that space, from mm-hmm. that place, because we know we have so much connected to us, our home, our children, our jobs, our family. We're not going to risk that. Real men are not going to risk that. But then 
my wife is not looking at so much me risking any of it. She's looking at it from the fact that I'm a woman. And she said it to me. I'm a woman. I know what women do. And she has mm-hmm. a motive. I'm mm-hmm. like, Gee. and so I, I absolutely, as a man, concur 100% with what you just said. And that's my comment for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have another caller on the line. Who am I speaking with? Hello. Hello. Yes, this is your mother-in-law. Pastor Hello, Alice mother. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? Where I'm fine. Great show. Great topic. <laughs> now, let me say this. Mm-hmm. Because I've been married for 41 years, mm-hmm. and I know that marriage is work. Mm-hmm. Relationship is work. And I'm, I'm sorry, I always said a woman does not want a man until another woman has, has Absolutely. made him I agree to you 100%. the person that he is. Because me and my husband, we, we met in junior high school. He wasn't a man. We were teenagers. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. over the years, we groomed each other. He had in place what I needed, and I have in place what he needs. Mm-hmm. But just to say this, women were made differently by God. Yes. If you look at Adam and you look at Eve, Absolutely. you see how cunning Eve is. And men, you know, I love my husband. Sometimes they're just clueless. Yes, yes, they are. When it they comes to be. certain things. And they I'm be. not saying that they're weak, but I'm just saying that sometimes they let their emotions and, 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 their, and their, their bodies get into the yes. way of their thinking. And you're so you right. Know, and so correct. Then, yeah, and then there's a lot that's that's going on that they just they're just clueless about. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know that women most of the time mature faster than men or mm-hmm. young men. Um, so there there is an Im- it's, I'm not gonna say an imbalance, but there are differences between the two agendas. So mm-hmm. even in relationships and dealing with dating someone else. Uh, Sometimes we just allow men just allow them women just to lead them on. Yes, I've known people yes. who were in relationships that they said I never. And I've talked to people because in my place in ministry, I've counseled people where I've never. Men have said I've never told her that I was leaving my wife, but yet you wanted to be with him for years. Yes, exactly. There's another woman exactly. that wanted to be with a man for years when he said I never told her I was leaving my wife. So mm. why did you stick around? Then you're mad at him because he's still with his wife. He, yes. he never separated. He's been with his wife all the time. You See? were just the other woman. <laughs> exactly. So, exactly. Come on. Let's wake up. Let's wake up and use some common sense. Let's be responsible about ourselves, our bodies. Let's stop manipulating men. Yes. Men absolutely. stop manipulating women. Yes. Let's mm-hmm. get it together because this is not what God intended us to do together as man and wife. You're right. Men and absolutely women, right. As husband absolutely and wife. Absolutely right. But, we just we're just so we're living in this day and time where I can have who I want, and and they go after what they want. They do, and they're <laughs> bold with it. It's crazy. They're very bold with it. Bold, and like you said, we we, we got to learn how to con- conserve ourselves, our bodies, our minds. There's so much more that God has intended so for much us more. than to just be worrying about. Uh, a, a relationship with, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a healthy relationship with a man, but if you, if you decided to be with that man or that woman, I'm not saying things are wrong. Here we mm-hmm. are, we as people of color, we don't take the time that when we have issues to really get seek help. Absolutely. Absolutely. We don't go to professional marriage counselors and seek help. And you, you know, should. We don't, but some people, I, I mean, should. I've heard men say, and this is not, I mean, I don't know, women could have said it too. It's just that men that I've heard, I'm not going to go to therapy because I'm not going to have nobody tell me how I'm going to be in my relationship. And it's sad yeah. because that means you don't want the help. You don't, you want, don't the want the help. help. You don't, I don't want anybody to know my business. Right. Business, so to me, you rather see your relationship unhappy. fail because right. that's what's going to happen when a woman gets fed up. It will fail. Exactly. Right. But like, like, all I want to say is that in my closing is that we women, we men, need to really get it together with, with mm-hmm. relationships. How can we say we want to have a, 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 a great relationship with the Father, with yes. our God? Yes. And he's supposed, that's supposed to be the ultimate relationship. Ultimate. And we can't have yep. a decent relationship here on earth with one another. Absolutely. Um, sisters, Absolutely. Brothers, husband, and wife. And on that Absolutely. note, I'm done. Bless you. Thank you, Mom. And she's correct. 
see the thing. If you, if to me, I've always said in a relationship, look at the relationship he has with God and look at the relationship he has with his mom. If he has respect, nine times out of ten, if a man have respect for his mother, he's going to have respect for his woman. Because that's where it starts, the love that the mother gives. And it's and also, it's, if you don't have that, guess what? It's a possibility that you may not make it. If you don't have that relationship with God and y'all come together, you may not make it. And I pray that each and every one of us have that connection and relationship with God. That's your strength. That's when you fall weak and short, that's where you run to. When you start recognizing that other women or other men are showing you that much attention, hey, guess what? You should stay away from those people. Stay away from them. If you know that someone, Susie or Bob, has a crush on you and every time they see you, hey, how you doing? How are you? Come on, you know. You know what his intense intentions are. He likes you. He likes the way you look. Every time you turn around, he's right there. Every time he turns around, she's right there. And you guys always turn a blind. People turn blind eyes to things that they know is there. You have to stop doing it. Correct it. If you want out, be out. If you want to stay in your marriage, focus on your marriage. Women, leave the married men alone. And men, you should leave the married women alone. Because you know what? I'm sick of hearing, oh, you can't have friends. Yeah, I have a friend. He's my best friend. I don't need any more friends. Because that's what you hear. Oh, your husband won't let you have friends. It's just dinner. Really? Come on, dude. Would you want your wife to have just friends that can go out to dinner? I heard men, I had met a conversation where I used to, a couple of people I used to hang out with. And guess what they would say? Oh, I love my wife. I love my wife. Huh? I, I would never let go of my wife. But they are okay with them having their affairs on the side, which is sad. And I asked them, so how would you feel if she was doing the same thing that you're doing? How would you feel? And yes, mom, you are correct. I'm not really saying all men are weak, but some men do turn a blind eye when they see a bad female trying to give them attention. They do turn weak. Some of you can handle it. Some of you can be like, okay, she nice looking, but so is my wife. And same thing, ladies. Okay, yeah, he's cool, but hmm, so is my husband. Looks aren't everything. Love yourself, love your home, love God first, and let everything else fall into place. You have to do these things. If you do not do this in order, guess what? You're going to have a hard time. You are going to really have a hard time. My cousin says, Apostle hit it on the nail on the head when he said, when you know better, you'll do better. Absolutely. Absolutely. And same thing with Joe. He says, if you done, if you done that mean you are done, don't come back. When you're done, okay, don't come back. My husband, the reality is separation does not mean divorce. We have to understand that you are still married. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, um, Pastor Coker. Yes, yes. My mama, <laughs> welcome to Sierra Leone 2022. Absolutely. I am going to, we will be there. We will definitely be there. We are very, very excited about this. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. That's going to be a wonderful adventure there. I can't wait till we get there. I love, I love them. They are our family in West Africa. I love them. They are awesome. I love their humbleness. I love their spirit. But moving forward, we have to do better. Like mom said, we have to do better to respect one another. Because guess what? It's going to come a time that you're going to want to get married too. And you know what? What comes around? goes around. I'm a firm believer in you reap what you sow. I really, really believe that. You do. So, ladies, gentlemen, let's do better. Let's start showing each other that we care, that we can love one another. Because this doesn't happen to everybody. It does happen a lot in our culture, which is sad. Because all you see is young girls dying, women dying, men getting shot. I knew a couple that broke up, and guess what? They broke up, and she killed him. She shot him. I was, I was, I never knew that we were together all the time and never knew that that was in her. See, you never know the person until you do something to hurt them and you break them because he wanted to leave her, but she shot him and then shot herself. It was a tragic and I couldn't believe it because we were together every day and I never knew that this, this part was in her. But see, that's the thing. You never know the damage you can cause a person. You never know. You can sit up here and you can just 
thinking that everything's okay, but never know where a person will snap. And there are people out here that will snap when you least expect it. The nicest person, because we have a tendency of judging a book by its cover and not knowing how a person can really be on the inside. And you don't know how much you have already hurt them. So many times you could have just damaged them and hurt them. And you don't know what they've been through in the past. And then here you come adding on to what they've already been through in the past. Stop it. Ladies, stop flirting. Pat Elder White, when you said the lady was like, hey, Pastor White or Elder White, it's the way she said it. And it's very disrespectful. She, I mean, like I said, women know women. You may not think there's no harm into that, but there is. And it's very disrespectful. You should never walk around saying, hey, Pastor, hey, but come on, stop it. No, that shouldn't even come out of a woman's mouth. That's, that's a level of, of disrespect to your wife. And you sometimes, men, you have to correct these things. Hey, hey, the, mm -mm, it's Elder White to you. Or it's Pastor White to you. It's not no, hey, it's how you doing, Pastor White. How are you? God bless you, Pastor White. That's what she should have been saying. You don't sit up and turn around and start having, because once you allow that to happen, guess what? She's going to continue to do that. And all that's going to do is bring anger into your household. Your wife is going to be mad, and then next thing you know, boom. We have another caller on the line. Who am I speaking with? It's your husband. It's Dr. Flanagan. Uh, I'm not going to be too long. Um, Elder White brought up a good, a good scenario, and I just wanted to ask your opinion and the opinion of women. Mm -hmm. He said that the woman was saying, hey, Elder, or hey, Pastor, in a disrespectful way. Mm -hmm. Now, he can't control what comes out of his out of her mouth right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. he, he's not he, he you know he don't know her or whatever the case may be so if she's saying hey past or whatever the case he didn't know she was going to do that how does he handle that moving forward so that his wife won't feel that kind of way because elder white i'm sure is innocent i'm sure he did not prompt mm -hmm. that i'm oh, sure absolutely. he's not doing anything so so my thing is if a woman is being disrespectful because we always talk about disrespectful men. But when there mm -hmm. are women that are disrespectful, like this woman who was, you know, definitely calling him, hey, or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. how should he handle that? Or how should men handle that? Because a lot of times, wives, not, not saying you, baby, hallelujah, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of women, a lot of wives who look at that and they immediately say, well, what are you saying to her? What are you doing to make her you know, come at you like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you address that? There are just some disrespectful females. He's in church. He can't control the way that she's doing that. So mm -hmm. what should his next steps be? Well, if it was me and I heard her say this, this is just me. I'm not saying everyone should do this. I am my own person. But when she said, Hey, Pastor, I'm like, Hey, so-and-so I would have jumped in and said something to her. <laughs> Cause did she speak to me? Maybe she didn't speak to Shannon. Maybe she just spoke to Pastor. Mm -hmm. I don't know the situation mm -hmm. overall. I don't. But only thing he could do was just, you know, say, you know, hello, here's my wife, Shannon, you know, and she just made her basically speak to her. And if she chose not to, and next time around, then he would have to just correct it. Because it's disrespectful to speak he, to the husband and not the wife. Right, like right. Like I said, okay. but we don't know. I, I, I don't know the whole entire situation. I don't know. I'm not going to say that he um, made her feel that comfortable that she could come out to him like that, because I don't know. I'm only speaking hypothetically, right. you know, so I don't know the whole situation unless, you know, if we had time for him to tell us what, how, you know, how their dialogue goes throughout the days or whatever. But right now we don't know. We can only speculate right, right. and assume okay, that she's this way. Yeah. So, no, yeah, I don't there's know. A lot of, <laughs> Angie there's said, a lot of, there's a lot of history. Her, and I'm sorry, said, what? you know our cousin. I'm sorry, honey, but you know our cousin hit her in the gut and the neck. <laughs> That's how you handle it. You know, she... <laughs> but you know, the fact <laughs> is, there are a lot of dis there are a lot of disrespectful women out there, just as much as there are disrespectful men. So I just wanted to know Absolutely. in that scenario. Thank you, baby. Appreciate it. You're welcome, baby. Let me make something clear. When I say man or men. Sometimes I'm saying one man, meaning all of us, not just one particular species. So I'm just not going to call y'all species, but I'm just saying, I'm not just speaking on just men. When I say men or man, I'm speaking on men, one man, one man. So it's all of us, 
not just a particular, it's just not just the men. It's all of us. Because there are some women out here who are just as bad as the men. They are. And there are some men who think they got game. And let me tell you something, married men, and some women, your game is not that tight. You get away with certain things because we allow you to. We know, we know what you're doing. But some women just don't care because guess what? They may be doing their own thing. So you have to be careful with that too. Seriously, you do. You have to be very, very careful because there's a lot of women who can play it way better than the man. Men, you storm out, get mad, and leave the house. She's not going to care because she's not chasing you. Because sometimes it's sad to say it, but it's true. It's just real talk because guess what? I know people that's like that. That's why I can say it's real talk. Some women don't care about it. They don't. So you, they don't want to check your phone. They don't care that your phone ringing all hours of the night. They don't, they don't care. Because guess what? They don't want you checking theirs either. They don't. Because the moment you say, hey, who's that calling you? Guess what? You're like, well, who's calling you? We have a caller on the line. Who am I speaking with? Hello, uh, Lady Lisa. This is your cousin Angie. Hello, um, my cousin Angie. I'm, oh, my gosh. <laughs> if I may, I just I want to I want to go back to the um, dating while separated, um, where I understand that separation does not mean you're no longer married. Let's just um, put this out here that every marriage is not a marriage that's ordained by God, and I say that because. Um, you know, there, there's the legal marriage, you know, mm-hmm. and then there's mm-hmm. the marriage ordained by God. And mm-hmm. when you're ordained by God, I mm-hmm. think um, you should really, you know, stray away from dating until you see what God has planned and in store for you and mm-hmm. your marriage because it, it could possibly be, you know, reconciled, so on and so forth. And mm-hmm. when you ha- But when you have a legal marriage, Mm -hmm. And you're married to the devil, okay? Um, And he's fighting you every step of the way. You know, I heard you comment that you did what you needed to do to get divorced. And I can just say for me, my hand is raised here, that I fought for divorce for like two years or so. Mm -hmm. Because the devil was not doing what, you know, he didn't want to release me. However, Mm -hmm. is it fair for man or woman that's in that type of situation um, to not live his or her life as long as they are up front with the individual that they may encounter and let them know. Um, because I really believe it's a difference. When, when you're fighting tooth and nail to get out of something, you, don't have, you have no intentions on going back. Mm-hmm. And until the court's, allow you a date and so on and so forth, you know, this pandemic, it, it kept me going for a long time. Mm-hmm. Should I have put my life on hold and not date because mm-hmm. the devil didn't want to sign the papers? Okay. So let's say, okay, I hear what you're saying. And yes, if he's fighting or she's fighting you and not trying to sign the papers just because it's a control, it's a control thing. Because some people are like that. It's all about control, not letting you move on, but they moved on while they're still married. But again, sometimes we marry people that God did not p- put us with. And sometimes those are the things that you have to suffer for not waiting. So my thing is this, if, If he don't want to release you and you start dating someone and you can prove that you're filing divorce papers and they are in the system, that's up to you and him to go go that direction. I can't say you shouldn't, but for me, marriage is marriage. That's just how I feel about that. But you have a choice. If you bring that to him, to the guy that you want to date and he's pursuing you and you can prove your point, hey, I filed divorce because it it does start in their heart. If in your heart you are divorced, then you're divorced. But you have to be honest. And I know a lot of people who are not honest. They say they are divorced or they, no, they say they're separated. We're going to file for a divorce. Five years later, he's still not divorced. And like mom said, there are some people who will say, I never said I wasn't leaving my wife. And that's true because there are men like that. But for you, because you filed and I already know your story. 
you fouled several times because of technicalities, and we, we already know the story. But that wasn't your doing. That was the court's doing, and part of it was your husband's doing, ex-husband's doing. So, so every situation right, so. is different. Absolutely. So I just wanted to put that out there because I am, you know, I like to be upfront and honest. And someone may be listening or watching the show Mm -hmm. who could have been going through something like me, Mm -hmm. whether it's man or woman. And I don't want them to feel condemned or think they have to stay and put put their life on hold because there are some things that that, you know, the the world is the world. We we are of Christ, but we live here in the world, and everything is not going to work in order of the Christian order. However, um, everybody knows this story, and you and you know you know people, you know mm-hmm. people, you know seriously when people say I'm separated, but yet you still can't find them. There's there's a big difference, and I think everything. It's not just always so cut and dry as to you're still of married. Course not. Don't of date. course not. It's I don't not, think I don't. That's um, just my personal opinion. Okay. But thank you for calling. But I'm going to just say All right, have a good this. One. We know, we know right from wrong. Yes. And no, everything is not going to be cookie cutter or we can't just jump out here and do this and do that. But at the end of the day, you still have to fix whatever issues and problems that are there. To me, I feel like before you really, this, like I said, that's everyone's situation is different. I can't tell you how to be. It's just a topic that I just felt that needed to be had. Everyone who's going through certain things in life by dating a married person, I can't tell you what to do, but we have another call on the line. Who am I speaking with? This is Erica. Hi, Erica. How are you? I'm doing good. I, I, <laughs> I'm sitting and I'm listening in. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I I wanted to ask, um, and I hope I'm not ruffling feathers, but then again, I hope I am, you know, if, if what we are saying and if what we are imparting into women and men is this under the auspices of godly counsel or are we just kind of talking from our own experience and giving recommendations? Um, Because, you know, there are some guidelines that, you know, God gives us in terms Mm -hmm. of, Absolutely. things, and then there is our way of, you know, trying to handle mm-hmm. certain things, you know. And, mm-hmm. you know, Lady Lee, you, you know, you know, as well as myself that, you know, the Bible kind of encourages us as women, you know, to make sure that, you know, we are, you know, instructing younger women and other women in the ways of the Lord so that they're able to kind of, you know, grow in the things Absolutely. of the Lord. Um, you know, I would say to the young lady who called in, you know, to kind of say, you know, is it okay to, to date, you know, while separated, I would say that the, the Bible does not encourage that. Why mm-hmm. doesn't it encourage mm-hmm. you because you're still married? So, you know, it's unfortunate that we go through these these things that, you know, when, you know, we are hooked up with people sometimes when mm-hmm. we're young that are not Absolutely. right for us. God gives Absolutely. us a free choice, right? So we made those choices to say yes to those things. And so, you know, I believe that sometimes the enemy would have us to believe that, you know, um, that it's, it's okay to, to do the same things as the world. But if this is, if this is godly right. counseling, if this is mm-hmm. godly counseling we're given, then we're called to be separated. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, and Absolutely. And Absolutely. We are doing differently than you know, the things that the world would do. And so the world would say, hey, it's okay to date, you know, while separated. But the actuality is if you're dating it's while separated, not. you are uh, participating in sexual sins, then you're committing adultery. So, no, Absolutely. it's not okay. Absolutely. But like you said, so, um, me, thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, can homie. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, I couldn't hardly hear you. Were you done with your call? Because I wanted to. Uh, no, I was listening to, to what you were saying. I agree with you because if we look at it that way, we cannot step out. And like you said, it would be adultery that which we will be committing. And I think that's the key right there. So that's why here, this, this is why I'm saying you have to file for a divorce. You have to be legally divorced. It's not out. I mean, yes, it's your fault that you chose the monster that you chose to date, meaning anyone, not just the call. I'm not talking about the call. I'm talking about anyone. You know, sometimes you know 
who you're marrying. Sometimes that person is an open book and show you exactly who they are. And you know they're not godly. They're not going to have your back with anything. You know certain things about these people, but yet you still chose them. That's, that's I listened to a testimony real. yesterday, uh, Lady Lisa, if you will. I listened to a testimony of um, a, a mother of the church, and she said that, you know, she was married to her husband for 23 years, and she came in the house, and she told us that when she came in the house, he was in there with another woman. and. Wow to, you know, make the decision of what to do. And she said, and, you know, she got counsel from people that say, oh, you should bust him upside his head, you should do this, you should walk out, you know, but that's not what God was calling her to do. He didn't call mm-hmm. her to stay with him, but he mm-hmm. called her to pray. He called her to pray. He called mm-hmm. her to examine herself and to examine the things that were within herself so mm-hmm. that she could go about situation in a different manner and she said that she told the woman she said this is the last time that you're coming in my house she said she didn't realize that he was going to die she said but he died after and so it wasn't that you know God meant her to be in this nasty Mm -hmm. situation but while while she was working on the things that God wanted her to deal with with herself then he Mm -hmm. was working out things so I mean I just want to close you know and I'll, I'll get off of your line by just kind of making sure too that that I mentioned that you know we're remembering that as women of God you know mm-hmm. as first lady as you know missionaries and things that we're Absolutely. called to be an example to young yes. people we're the examples to marry women other women and so what that witness looks like for us is that hey maybe we can't do you know certain things you know that the world does that we can't be portrayed the same way as the world does because when we get on terms like this to kind of share certain things we want you're correct um, you know 100 and i thank um, you for your call i really do i appreciate everything you just said because you're correct it's you're 100 correct and okay my husband said we should be moving under golly I can't see what he, I can't see. Oh, my thing blinked out. My screen blinked out. What did he say? I can't even see it. Okay, so he's saying we should be, we should not be driven by our emotions and ignoring God's law, purpose, and plan. We don't operate like the world. We don't operate like the world. We don't like operate the like the world. That's correct. We, at least we Separate. shouldn't. So, we shouldn't. Yes. That's Absolutely. Right. And right. Chief he's, White, he's, Elder White, there's a difference between a soulmate and a soul type. And that's true because there are a lot of types that people, I'm used to this type of guy, I'm used to that type of guy, and guess what? And sometimes that type of guy that you're choosing for yourself, it just doesn't work. You wait that's on right. God. Men, women, need women wait interested on God. In, that's right. It, it, women need to be interested in God's type. And so while they are separated, they should be separated and seeking, separated and seeking, separated and seeking God for what he would have them to do next. Not separated and thirsty, not separated and dating, but separated and seeking God for next steps. So that Absolutely. I heard Dr. Planning say that so the next time that you have this opportunity, that you won't make this decision, uh, you, you know, you won't have your, get yourself wrapped up in this same situation again. So again, just encouraging always to give this godly counsel, because people need to hear the word. Absolutely, people need to hear absolutely. And I thank you for your call. I thank you so much for your okay, call. God. Bless you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Going forward, ladies, gentlemen, we have to do better. That's all I'm going to say on this. How, Like I said, I'm not the one to tell you how to live your life. But if you are walking that walk, you have to start living by what God, what God has for you. It's just that simple. You can't make your own mind up on what you think is best. You just can't. So, with that being said, I am closing out. That is my time. Um, Join me next week with my husband, my handsome husband, Dr. Danny Flanagan, with Big Facts, Dr. Danny Flanagan, Big Facts, Dr. Danny. I'm I'm just doing my own little intro. I always wanted to dance to that, but he wouldn't let me. So, (laughs) but we will be here on, I believe it's August 30th. Hmm. And our topic, if I'm not mistaken, honey, correct me if I'm wrong, how to keep your relationship, as you call it, lit, hot, spicy, keeping it on fire. So that would be our topic for next week. And I mean, no, it's the 30th. It's next, next, next week is the 30th, right, Marcus? Am I right? The 30th is next week? Hold on, I'm checking now. <laughs> yeah, I want to I say that it is. I think it's August 30th next week. But that would be the topic of our relationship. Big facts and bigger facts joined together. 
August 30th, 7 o'clock p.m. Join us. Now, if I want to ask you to keep this going, to keep my segments going, please feel free to donate to Futures World um, Cash, Futures World Cash App. Yes, Cash App, my Futures World Cash App. I don't even know what it is. That's so sad. Dollar what is sign, it, honey? Futures oh. World with Cat the yeah. F. Yes, that's, that's what it sign, is. Cat the F. <laughs> U T R U T U R E S Cat W Yes O R L D. You can see it on the screen right now. Thank you. Because I sure couldn't see it because my screen is fully gone. So I couldn't see it. But I thank you, each and every one of you. I love you guys so much. This has been an awesome topic. And I hope that it helps some of us, some of you. Like I said, this is not a show about judgment. It's just set, it's just topics that need to be had. And I feel like all of us across the world can help someone. And I pray that we have helped someone on here. If not, share it with someone. Please continue. You can tell them to go back and watch it because it's, it'll be right there on Facebook. So I thank you and I love you and I appreciate each and every one of you. God bless you. Stay safe. This is Lisa Flanagan with Bigger Facts. I love you too, baby. <laughs> Thank you. My rock. <laughs> you know, this is 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 you know, Great job, Alex. I know you always call me Alex. Come on. <laughs>